Hello and welcome to episode 17 of ARM Template Masterclass. Today we're going to continue our series on looking at using developer techniques with ARM templates and we're going to have a look at testing. Now testing is a fairly big subject so this is going to be a multi-part series. In this first part we're going to have a look at a very easy way to test your templates using some pre-built tests in the ARM template test toolkit and I'll talk a little bit more about what that is in a minute. But first off, why would we want to test? What's the point in testing ARM templates? The main reason you want to do this is to try and catch problems early. If you can catch an issue with your template by running a simple test that takes a couple of minutes, it's going to be much better than if you have to wait till you actually run your template and you've got through deploying all your other prerequisite resources and the last resource fails because you've made a spelling mistake or there's some sort of error. That's very frustrating, but also it will cost you a lot of time and potentially money. If you're deploying a lot of resources as part of your deployment and you're going to have to throw them all away at the end because something failed, those resources have been sitting around costing you money for no benefit. So testing so it should hopefully save you time and money. Another reason to test is to make sure that you're actually in compliance. So most companies are going to have some sort of standards you need to apply to when you're deploying resources. You might also have regulatory compliance you need to meet and so on. If you write your tests up front, you can run those against your templates to make sure that you're in compliance and you can have a way to be able to tell that straight off the bat without having to go and manually check things, without having to deploy all your resources first to make sure that you're in compliance. And finally, hopefully testing lets you write better templates, particularly if you're looking at things like complying with standards and so on. Your test should tell you where you can make improvements to your template. Uh, and over time, as you iterate, your template should get better and better. And then your test should get better and better as well to keep up. So by adding testing into your template workflow, hopefully you are going to save yourself some time, money, frustration, make sure you're in compliance with any rules or standards you need to meet and improve your templates. So this week, we're going to have a look at a way to very quickly and easily bring testing into your templates with some pre-built tests. And we're going to look at using the ARM template test toolkit, which I'll probably refer to now on as the TTK. The TTK is a toolkit built by the Microsoft ARM team, which is designed to test your templates against a number of best practices to try and make sure that your templates are complying with what they think, at least, are the best practices for creating ARM templates. It's a PowerShell-based framework using Pesto under the hood, and we'll have a look at Pesto some more in other videos. We won't go into it in great detail today, but it uses that as the means of testing things, and you can run this against your templates, and it will look inside your templates to see whether you're following best practices. Things like, have you got parameters that aren't referenced anywhere in your template, so they're not being used? Do you have secure strings that have got default values, because that's insecure? Are your API versions up to date and using a recent version? If you're using min and max in your parameter settings, are these set to numbers? And lots more. There's a whole array of best practice tests that we can run that will hopefully highlight issues in your templates that you can fix and get to the point where your tests are all green. Because this is pre-built and ready to go, it's a very simple way to get started. It's a single PowerShell command for you to run your templates and get a nice output that shows you where you might not be complying with best practices. So it's a really great way to get started with testing and bring it into your workflow. So let's have a look at how that works. To get started with the TTK, the first thing we need to do is download it. It's not an executable or anything, it's just a set of files that we need to get from GitHub. So this is the GitHub repo. We'll need to clone that onto our machine using GitHub tools, or you can download the zip file from GitHub directly. So download that on your machine, get it onto a folder, and then we'll switch over to the CLI. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to import the TTK library. So we'll just use the import module command, pointing it to the arm-ttk.psd1 file, and this will import the module. Now we've got that imported, we could look at running a test. So the command we need is test az template, and then we need the dash template path flag, and here we can pass in the path to our template. Now you can pass in here either the path to a single template file or the path to a folder containing template files. However, there is a slight caveat to the last point we're passing in a folder. There has been a design decision made with the TTK that if you pass in a folder, it's looking for a top level template, which then calls out to other templates in that folder. And it's looking for a particular name. Either it's looking for Azure deploy.json or main template.json. If you point it at a folder and there isn't one of those two files in there, it will error. Now, I'm not particularly a fan of this decision because I name my templates all sorts of different things, even when they're a top level template. And potentially, I might have multiple top level templates in the same folder as well. And so, this is a bit of a pain if you want to do that. Now, you can work around this by 
just passing in a single file to the TTK command. And you could use a loop, for example, outside of the TTK to loop through all of the files and then pass them in, which is what I tend to do. But it is a bit of a pain. It also comes in when we look at some of the tests as well. There are some tests which are intended to work differently when they look at a top-level template, but only if that template is named as your deploy or main template, which again is not great. And we'll see an example of that and how you can work around it in a minute. So for this test, I'm just going to point it at a particular file called template.json, and that's all you need. We'll run that. And you can see what it gives us is an output of each test, and the test will be green if it passes, and red if it fails. There's also a yellow version which is undetermined, but I don't think we should see that with the actual TTK. So most of the tests we're doing here, we've passed. However, there are two we've failed. One of them's valid, one of them's not. So the first one, the API versions, it's telling us that we're using an old version of the API, which is great because we are, and we should update that. And so that's a very simple thing for us to fix and actually get that one passing. Now the second one here is saying about location should not be hard coded. And there are a couple of things this looks for. The first thing it tests for is whether or not you've actually hard coded a string value into your location property of a resource. You just put in West Europe or something. That's something you should avoid and you should make sure that the location is something that's allowed to be passed in or is coming from the resource group location. Uh, we haven't done that in our template. We are actually passing, there is a parameter we're passing in called location and it has a default value of resource group dot location. The problem here harks back to the, what we talked about a minute ago was that this template isn't called main template or Azure deploy. So it doesn't think it's a top level template. And it's complaining about the fact that we've set a default value for our location parameter to resource group dot location. This is allowed in a top level template, but it's not allowed in any child templates because they should be inheriting the location from the top level template. But because ARM doesn't know this is a top level template because I haven't named it that way, it's complaining. Now there's two ways for us to resolve this. The first is that we can rename our template to either azuredeploy.json or main template.json. This will get picked up as a top level template and this error will go away. Or if we don't want to do that, we can skip this test. So the command line does have a flag where you can pass in dash skip and then the name of the test, which is just the name that's displayed in the, in the actual failure message. And when we run the TTK now, this will skip this test and it won't cause us an error. The other flag to be aware of on the command line is the dash test flag. So this is the opposite to the skip flag. The test flag tells it which tests to run. So you can give it a list of the specific tests you want to run and it will only run those and not anything else if you wanted to look at something specific. So we'll just run the, the variables must be referenced test here and you can see it's only going to run that test. And that's how you run the TTK. It's not particularly complicated. And because it's just a PowerShell library, you can integrate it into your workflow however you want. You could run it manually. You could have a script you run as part of deploying a template that actually runs this first. You could even integrate it into your build process. Because it's just a PowerShell script, you can run that wherever you can run PowerShell. But also there are extensions to be able to run this in your build tools. There's one for Azure DevOps, which I created myself. And you can find that on the marketplace if you search for TTK. There's also a way to run it in GitHub Actions, which I'll link to below the video today as well. So you can integrate that into your pipeline. Hopefully you can see that the TTK is a pretty easy way to just get started running some tests on your templates. But it can bring some good value, particularly if you find that actually you're, you're not using a lot of best practices. You can make some tweaks to your templates to make them compliant. You'll have better templates and your tests will pass. And if you make changes in the future, you can just rerun your tests and you can pick up whether you've actually deviated from the best practices at that point. So I think it's a really useful tool to get started with testing. And that's it for how to use the ARM template test toolkit. Hopefully you'll see it's pretty straightforward, but if you've got any questions or issues, please feel free to add the question to the video and I'll be happy to reply. Next week, we're going to continue with our work on testing. We're going to have a look at doing some more complex testing that you write yourself using PESTA as the testing language. So hopefully I'll see you then. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.